Arizona, they haven't done anything there. The governor hasn't done a thing, and the governor in California hasn't done a thing. People are flowing through there like nothing, but Texas is very secure, and it's going to be even more secure by the time you finish, which will be soon. And I just want to thank some friends of mine. Brandon Judd's been a friend from day one. He knew what we were all about and uh, knew what we were saying and doing, and I think we were ahead of our time. And uh, General Thomas Sulzer was uh, somebody that was always right there and understands this uh, Texas military department about as well as you could have. I think he understands war because that's what you're in. You're in a war. And William Mike Gorby, you know who he is, and he's been fantastic. It's just an incredible group that you put together, fortunately. Uh, I might ask uh, Brandon to say a couple of words because right at the beginning we were, uh, we were into it. We saw what was happening and the governor was there and then he really, he really stepped it up it's been amazing. Uh, I came when I was lucky enough to receive his endorsement. I endorsed him also and uh, very proudly endorsed him. And uh, a lot of things have happened in the last little while, but this is an incredible operation. Uh, Brenda, would you like to say a couple of words, please? Absolutely. Thank you, sir. President, thank you. Thank you. Uh, sir, I, wa I want you to know your agents, my agents, they're mad as hell. Absolutely mad. The President Biden went to Brownsville, Texas rather than going to Arizona, rather than going to San Diego, California, rather than coming to Eagle Pass, Texas, which has been the epicenter. What President Trump has seen right here is he's seen how his policies have worked, but he's also seen how he can expand upon those policies once he takes goes back into the White House. He has seen how Governor Abbott has been able to use his policies to secure this specific area, the epicenter, of the last two years of the illegal border crisis that we have had to endure. And your agents, President, they are pissed. Border Patrol agents are upset that we cannot get the proper policy that is necessary to protect human life, to protect American citizens, to protect the people that are crossing the border illegally. We want to protect them as well. And we can't do that because President Biden's policies continue to invite people to cross here. Thank goodness we have a governor like Governor Abbott. Thank goodness we have somebody that's willing to run for president of the United States, forgo everything else that he's been doing to serve the American people. President, thank you. Uh, the uh, reports have come out and we've been covering them and everybody's been, and I spoke to the parents of an incredible young lady and you, you saw her the other day. You saw what happened the other day in Georgia. And the parents are devastated. They're incredible people. But this is a Joe Biden invasion. This is a Biden invasion over the past three years. I call him Crooked Joe because he's crooked. He's a terrible president, the worst president our country's ever had, probably the most incompetent president we've ever had. But it's uh, allowing Thousands and thousands of people to come in from China, Iran, Yemen, the Congo, Syria, and a lot of other nations. Many nations are not very friendly to us. He's transported the entire columns of uh, fighting aged men, and they're all at a certain age. And you look at them and they say, they, they look like warriors to me. Something's going on. It's bad. Now the United States is being overrun by the Biden migrant crime. It's a new form of a vicious violation to our country. It's migrant crime. We call it Biden migrant crime, but that's a little bit long. So we'll just leave it. But every time you hear the term migrant crime, you know where that comes from, allowing thousands and thousands and actually millions and millions of people to come. Could be 15 million, could be 18 million by the time he uh, gets out of office, because hopefully the biggest risk we have is nine months. That's a long time. A lot of bad things can happen. I, I always say in speeches and rallies, it's if you take the 10 worst presidents in the history of our country, you added them all up, all of the problems, all of the lousy jobs they've done, you can add them all up. It's not as bad as this one man has done for our country. What he's done to our country is he's destroying our country. Uh, we were just talking before, We were, the general was saying, I can't believe, he can't believe what's happening. He can't believe it's so sad. Last year almost, Half of all ICE arrests were criminal aliens charged for more than 33,000 assaults, 3,000 robberies, 6,900 burglaries, 
7,500 weapons crimes. This is all migrant crime. 4,300 sex crimes, 1,600 kidnappings, and 1,700 homicides and murders. These are the people that are coming into our country. And they're coming from jails, and they're coming from prisons, and they're coming from mental institutions, and they're coming from insane asylums, and they're terrorists. They're being led into our, our country. And uh, it's horrible. It's horrible. And, you know, I know many of the leaders of these other countries that are doing it. And it's not just South America. It's all over the world. The Congo, a very big population coming in from jails from the Congo. You look at the jails now. You take a look at the jails throughout the region, but more importantly, throughout the world. They're emptying out because they're dumping them into the United States. And these guys try and make like, oh, isn't it wonderful? They don't 